Winston Churchill said that Americans can be always counted on to do the right thing after they've exhausted all other possibilities. <laughs> and um, I've, been a, I've been a participant in exhausting all the possibilities in healthcare. Uh, today, I also want to say I have a sense, and I, I share Robert's view, that we are approaching doing the right thing. I was asked to frame how we got to where we are, and first, I think the way to do that is to start with where we are today. And what is the status of quality access and affordability? Well, my typical MO is to grab my 25 favorite PowerPoint slides and uh, show you the dismal trends that are in all three of those areas. And actually, Jonathan did a nice, succinct summary, actually, of that. And so you also can invert, observe that that technique over the years has not worked too well, since I haven't changed anything. So uh, today I decided to try a different approach. And what I'd like you to do is imagine a better future in healthcare. What would it look like? I'll try to paint a picture of what I think would be a better future. All people in the U.S. have access to effective, quality, and affordable health care services. Health services are coordinated, integrated, and cover the whole person, including their teeth and their minds. Because effectiveness is understood and based on science, health outcomes are improving and compare well to other developed countries. Health disparities based on income, race, and region do not exist. Health technology delivers health and medical miracles at ever decreasing costs. The prior successes of public health serve as a model to achieve significant improvements in health status by focusing on smoking, nutrition, activity, and mental health. Health services are affordable, affordable for families, employers, and governments. And future generations of children can expect prosperous, healthy lifespan longer than their parents. As John Lennon would write and sing, imagine that. So why is what I just outlined such an impossible dream? How did we get to the point where we lost control of the health care system? Well, these reform efforts didn't go anywhere. The die was cast by three relatively small public policy changes between 1910 and 1970. First was the creation of the medical bureaus and the Blue Cross Blue Shields systems from 1910 to 1930s. By the way, the first medical bureaus were formed in the Northwest related to logging. Second, during World War II, health benefits exempt, were exempted from wage controls, and in 1954, health benefits were exempted from taxation as compensation. And third, we created the Medicare and Medicaid systems in the mid-60s. These three decisions drove the creation of a health system that is unique in the developed world. Provider-oriented payments, employer-based coverage, and public insurance for the poor and elderly. Moreover, this structure led to fragmentation, high variability in treatments and price, disparities in outcomes, and runaway costs. 